IoT security doesn't have to be complicated. It is complex, but implementing a secure IoT solution device and so shouldn't be hard. That's why Windows Schneider, who used to be a chief security officer at big tech companies, decided to create Thizzle technologies to help device manufacturers, IoT practitioners secure their IoT devices. As you'll see, Windows has a breadth of understanding and knowledge about security that is outstanding. I had a fascinating conversation with her during the IoT Stars live event, and I really urge you to listen to what Windows has to say. If you like the episode, don't forget to like it, subscribe to the channel, give us a comment, and also big thank you to IoT Stars, uh, the IoT networking event uh, that triggers interesting and relevant conversation among the IoT practitioners ecosystem and community. I really recommend you attend one of the IoT Stars event coming up. Uh, chances are I will be there. Uh, so see you soon. Bye. Hey, we're back here on the IoT show. This is Olivier, and uh, we are still at IoT Stars. Thanks for joining in. We have Win Window, right? Did right. I say it correctly? Yeah. Awesome. So tell us what you're doing, what is your background, and then we'll jump into some questions related to IoT security. Yeah, sure. Um, well, I started this all about uh, four and a half years ago, okay. and it was because uh, prior to starting this company, I was a CISO or Chief Security Officer at companies including Square, Fastly. Mozilla. Okay. I was the chief software security officer at Intel. Okay. Uh, I owned, owned all the security and privacy features for iOS and OS X at Apple for almost six years. I owned security sign-off for the Windows operating system while at Microsoft for multiple okay. revisions of the operating system. I was to be colleagues. Yeah, I was a security software engineer. I was a security consultant. I was a security researcher. Okay. I had uh, a lot of time to see what the security um, state of the world was. And in my role at Intel, I got to see that a lot of the work that we had done in these general purpose operating systems really hadn't made its way over to the devices space. And that, that it wasn't so much that we didn't know what to do to secure these devices. We absolutely did. It was that it's really hard to do, um, especially with so much hardware diversity out in the space. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and previously it might have been because of you know, power constraints, um, et cetera. But like, given the way we take these devices, we attach them to physical systems, we attach them to all the same networks, they have all the same exposure, um, and they're up against all the same threats. And now they've got real physical, real world impact when something goes wrong. So I spent a lot of time thinking about what I could do to make it easier for device makers to get these capabilities into their systems, because there are a number of things that you, show, you see in general operating systems deployed in the data center or even on workstations yes, yes. that are just um, underutilized in, yes. in, in devices. So yeah, so that's what Thistle's technology does. It makes it really easy for device makers to incorporate these sophisticated security capabilities into their devices really quickly and easily. Yeah, especially because then I used to be an embedded developer. We didn't care much about that aspect of things because devices were not connected before. So we had this kind of like siloed, you know, network infrastructure. And it was like, okay, if this isn't clear in the code or whatever, right? It's no longer okay. The devices are connected one more. And they're exposing business uh, resources to threats, right? So making it easier, I like that a lot. Because as you were saying, I remember myself, Coding for a real-time operating system that didn't have these security features in there was not easy. How do you think embedded developers are approaching security today? Do you think they are really concerned about it? Or do you still see you know, things are a bit lax in terms of how they approach it? Well, there's some devices that it, for which it's very clear they have high security requirements, whether you're building financial transaction systems or controllers for power and water or um, uh, industrial manufacturing equipment or medical devices or... Um, military equipment or um, space technologies, aviation, uh -huh. uh, automotive. Like, there's so many different types of systems that have very obvious security requirements. I think a lot of folks kind of struggle with justifying the investment that's required in order to get these capabilities up and running. Something like Secure Boot could take a team 18 months, even two years to get up and running. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's, 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 it's the implementation, but then it's also the testing because it's in line and it has to be. Completely reliable, right? Yes. Um, so it's um, it's 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 I think justifying making that investment to, to do this work. So that's one of the things that we're trying to to help teams leapfrog mm -hmm. by making it easy to get the capability in place without having to do everything from scratch, without having to do uh, the the labor that is otherwise required in order to get these capabilities yeah, in yeah. place. No, I, I like that you mentioned a few things. 
security is a very comprehensive and exhaustive thing to do, right? And when you, you approach security and this kind of device that you're an application developer, there's only that that you have to care about because you're running on an OS. You certainly have a device management infrastructure in place and so on. Well, you do embed it, you have to think about, you mentioned secure boot. Yeah. You have to think about encryption of your binaries. You have to think about secure enclave eventually if you want to run things in a secure environment. Uh, the encryption stacks are limited resources. So do you have compute for encrypting, decrypting, or not? Right? So, yeah. So how, how do you make it simple? <laughs> <laughs> By uh, implementing secure boot for yeah. a lot of different hardware platforms. We work closely with all manufacturers to uh, make sure that uh, secure boot works on that platform. So for all of their customers, then they get this board and they've got a secure boot implementation okay. that requires no, no engineering at all. It works, yeah. it just works okay. out of the box. But then additionally, we have backend services to support this, right? A backend service to do uh, firmware signing, okay. to do yeah. key management. Key management is the core problem for pretty much every security sure. problem. Yeah, right? That's, that's, that's yeah. an absolute nightmare. So to be able to like take that lift for the, for the, for the engineering team, yeah. that makes it tremendously easier. And then to do update and management, trying update into the same uh, validation mechanism so that you can be confident that the update is verified by the same uh, uh, encryption mechanism that's rooted in that hardware root of trust okay. so that you can maintain that secure execution state across updates as well. It's all tied together. And then you get to the place where, okay, I've got my high integrity system. I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure that it's running the code that I intended it to run. Yeah. And now I want to deploy something to it that's uh, also uh critical to protect something like secure configuration or a, a, an AIL uh, model, or sorry, a, an AI model that we want to deploy at the edge, yep. being able to encrypt yep. that and keep that uh, safe the same way that we protect the updates, the same way we protect and validate the kernel. That's, yep. that's uh, uh, kind of an expansion of the same capability. Yeah. So when, when I think about security for devices, to me, there's two big types of security. There's a static Security, as in, you know, encrypting your firmware, making sure that it's what I want running down there. It's got what, that's what I call static, as in it's something that is, you know, uh, controlled in time. And then there's more dynamic, you know, communication between devices, um, attacks that can happen on an IoT infrastructure. Are there things you also deal with or see out there, or are you mostly focusing on what is more, I would say, the static security. I would break up into two different groups. Okay. So resilience capabilities, things that make your system more resilient to attacks. And then uh, capabilities, and that set of capabilities is very measurable. When it does the thing, you can tell the thing is done, right? Okay. So like encrypt the thing, the thing is now encrypted, I can yes. tell, right? Okay. Um, and then you've got capabilities that are looking for the bad thing, right? Which is hard, right? So let's say endpoint security looks like this. Yeah. Anything that is scanning for, let's say, looking through your source code, looking for a code construct that might result in a vulnerability, you might find it, and you might find something. But have you found all the things? And if you didn't find anything, does that mean that nothing happened, or does that mean that the system doesn't know how to look for it? So as a CISO, it's always been very difficult to figure out how to value those. You can't yeah. tell whether it did completely the thing that you needed to do. You never, you never have confidence yeah, yeah, that yeah, it's doing yeah. enough. So I, I really do like security capabilities that provide a measurable in impact. Right. Yes. So, for example. Uh, the kernel is uh, signed, validated by hardware. If the signature fails, it doesn't boot. Okay. If the signature succeeds, it boots, and you know you're running a, a kernel yep. that was signed by a key that is protected by your key uh, 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 and firmware signing infrastructure. Yep. So those are the kinds of capabilities that I consider uh, resilience capabilities. Okay. They go to build the, the overall um, uh, attack surface mitigations yeah, for, the, yeah, for, the, yeah. for the for the device. Okay, okay that makes sense. You know, I like the way you're presenting that. It makes more sense than where I was going. But uh, the the um the other aspect of, of you know the, the modern I would say embedded world is edge edge AI, like AI coming to the edge. Yeah. So there's one part of it which is bigger binaries that are coming to the edge because models take room, so bigger attack surface for hackers out there. Um, bigger volumes of data to transmit in and out. Encryption might be something that comes in terms of computational resources in addition to the actual AI models running down there. Do you see things evolving, changing, um, you know, in, in terms of security when it comes to AI coming to the edge? Absolutely. After you do all that research, you make a huge investment in your, in your AI model. Yeah. And then to deploy it on the edge, it's actually out of your control when it's in deployment, okay. right? So being able to encrypt it so that you can... Uh, uh, be confident that it's 
uh, encrypted in storage, yep. that it's encrypted in transit, yep. that it's um, also what you intended. Because sometimes you yep. want to make sure that the thing that's executing is actually what you intended to deploy. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. nothing, yeah. Um, let's say, inserted that's not exactly what you intend. Yeah. All those things are even more important when we're talking about AI at the edge. Yeah, true. Well, when we're talking about deterministic systems, integrity of the results was warranted by the integrity of the code doing the analytics, right? Because it was deterministic, real time. Now with AI, <laughs> it's just like, can you trust the result if you don't trust the model, right? So it's even more important to make sure the model is right. I like that. Does make sense? Awesome. Anything you would recommend IoT developers, IoT practitioners to pay attention to in 2025? Absolutely. So um, if you sell to the European market, the European Cyber Resiliency Act means that you've got to do a lot of this work. Yes. Right? You've, got to, you've got a lot of work to do. And that's, that's great because it means all these devices are going to be much more secure. But for those teams that are looking ahead to 2027, well, it takes time to get this stuff in place. So that's one of the things that this can really help with, getting a lot of these security capabilities in place so that you're ready for CRA. Before 2027. Yeah. And if you don't want to get started, just contact this technologies. Right? Yeah, that's it. That's we'll, put, we'll put on the recording, we'll put some link down there. Fantastic. Can you spell out the link for those who are watching live? Sure. Thistle.tech, T H I S T L E dot T E C H. Awesome. Thank you very much. Very nice. You know, that was you. really nice having you today. And hopefully we can go into a more in depth discussion in another IT show episode. I would love that. Absolutely. Awesome.